Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Heroja Shai. Of F Society IRC podcast, I'm the moderator of this channel, and this is my review of episode 406, Not Acceptable. Uh, this was a tough episode. Um, as you can see, I'm layered up because things are getting kind of chilly, kind of dark and cold on Mr. Robot. And we'll get into that uh, with this review. Uh, this particular review, I'm going to talk about a couple of the different theories uh, that fans have had about the the show itself, like what's going on this season. Um, I might dedicate like a complete theory episode. I've done that in the past. I think it's time for this season. I think there's enough episodes up on the block here that we can kind of talk about that. Um, I do want to talk about some observations that, you know, I've always kind of been part of the show, but we really don't know how to make them, make of them. And I'll talk about that a little bit about the, the in my theories um, towards the end. They're kind of similar to when I talked about the episode where uh, Elliot got uh, caught in the honey trap, that episode with the Fruit Loop band, or not Fruit Loop, but the Fruity Pedibles guy. Uh, what was going on with some of the, the the background scenery of that particular episode. Uh, so this episode we had uh, Ellie and Olivia together having their moment, Dom and Darlene having their moment, we saw the appearance of White Rose and her uh, new assistant there, they had a little brief moment, and uh, we have Veer and Krista. So uh, how I'm going to break out this episode is I'm going to talk about White Rose and her assistant real quick because that's like the shortest part. Then I'm going to talk about Elliot and Olivia, um, then Dom and Darlene, and then I'm going to save the Vera and Krista stuff uh, towards the end there. So <clears throat> we get a moment with White Rose and um, her assistant. Uh, her assistant approaches her uh, because she has some information about Elliot. Uh, the information that Dom had found last episode with the uh, security cameras, uh, finding that, you know, Darlene and uh, Elliot were the ones that were near that F Society van. Uh, the assistant is pressing White Rose to take out Elliot. She says, you know, he was found within a mile of that burnout, our burnout Dark Army van. Uh, he's a problem, basically. This is something she's been saying all season. We need to kind of take him out. White Rose is kind of tired of this conversation. He's, she, she's like, this, not this conversation again. And they are in like this kind of classroom or boardroom kind of shared space area. And they're, White Rose is facing a, uh, a whiteboard that has these quantum equations on it. So it, it pertains to the, the nature, perhaps, of the Washington Township plan. And she's like, we, you know, we need to take him out. And he goes, why well, don't, you know, bring Elliot to me. Um, I want to show him that what we are doing uh, makes us on the same side. And a little bit prior to that in their little conversation, he also said that uh, if Elliot dies, his ship and hack dies with him, you know, we know that White Rose is just helping, has designed her entire existence around this project. And she wants it out of the States and into the Congo so it can do whatever it's supposed to do. And she has demonstrated in the past of all the people she has killed for the purpose of making sure that this project exists, uh, that it's secret, uh, nothing jeopardizes it. Uh, we saw that with the fact that uh, her assistant died. Uh, she ordered Leon to kill her assistant last season because Elliot had a hack to save the project. Uh, the fact that, you know, Elliot's dad and um, Angela's mother died from the leakage, if you will. Uh, Angela uh, being a threat to the project. Uh, White Rose wanted her dead. That didn't happen. So he punished Price for the, the lawsuit that could put, could have potentially jeopardize the Washington Township plant. Um, and just various people from the E Corp, you know, CEO dying to other people probably along the way, even members of F Society to make sure that her project goes forward. Uh, you know, bribing people for the UN vote, all all these, you know, 
plans and evil machinations are all designed for the sole purpose for this project. And so, yeah, she doesn't want to kill Elliot. It's again, I don't understand why Elliot is maybe not in Dark Army custody, but maybe White Rose is afraid of whatever backdoor that Elliot might have would also jeopardize the shipping uh, hack. So she doesn't want to jeopardize that in any fashion, but she's willing to take the risk of bringing Elliot to her to, for whatever reason, key phrase, to show that we are on the same side. And I'm not really sure what kind of side that is, and so it'll be interesting to see what that answer would be. So there's that brief moment. Um, we have Dom and Darlene, but we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about them first before we get into Elliot. So Darlene's back in Angela's apartment, and she's talking to Elliot, saying, "Hey, you know they, you know." stay in touch with me, I don't want to lose you, I still got the, you know, the tracker on you basically, as a reminder, um, they were supposed to meet up to finish up this hack, and Elliot's like, yeah, you know, they're apologizing to each other, they're trying to, you know, get that connection back to each other, and uh, Darlene ends the conversation, um, she get, gathers her stuff and she's about to leave, and lo and behold, boom, Dom's there, and Dom has her gun out, she has her finger on the trigger and Darlene's totally freaked out and Dom's like where's your brother Darlene <laughs> and Darlene's like how the hell did you get in here I'm like girl you probably can't even lock the damn door okay and I know Angela's apartment is looking a little kind of cray crazy there and it has been but we see more details now versus the party where we're seeing more of the, the photos of the victims and they're and their faces blotted out, which is something that I guess she might have gotten from um, White Rose and Darlene's coming out, and that the place looks like a, a mess, if you will. It, it seems like Darlene's not a very neat person. Um, <clears throat> Dom's like just kind of pushing Darlene out, out of the room, out of the way. She, Darlene's like, "Hey, you you can't call this in. You can't call the FBI, okay? You know, she's kind of like self shading to Dom, and Dom's like." Yeah, yeah, I know. And she's like, who are you calling? You know, the Dark Army finds out, and Dom's like, the Dark Army knows. And Darlene knows, oh shit, Dom's really the Dark Army agent. Like, she should have realized that, but really connecting that Dom is full Dark Army now. And she tells her to sit, and she calls it into Janice that she has Darlene, but not Elliot. And she's not giving up her brother. And Janice is like, okay, well, that's not good. Um, let me run it up with the flagpole. And we find out from the flagpole from White Rose that basically the Dark Army only wants Elliot. So Janice lets um, Dom know that. Um, that they only need Elliot. So they need to have uh, Darlene's phone. Because Don let him let them know that Darlene just spoke to Elliot and she has a phone, um, but uh, she's not giving it up. And she, they, she Dom's poor choice of words. Don needs to choose her words better. It's like uh, we don't really need her any longer. And Janice agrees, and she's like, um, "I'll be by by the place at three thirty. Uh, go ahead and uh, take care of Darlene." And Dom is sitting right across from Darlene as this conversation is happening on the phone and she's like frozen up and she's like what do you mean she goes well you're going to have to kill Darlene you can do that right I mean I wouldn't have to have to go stop by and kill your mother and all your family there and Dom's like no no um, I can do this she's like okay good I'll see you at 3 30 so there's a timetable we're still Christmas Day um, we you know went from morning from the initial virtual reality heist stuff uh, till and Krista getting kidnapped till now. You know we have this time frame here of you know Christmas Day afternoon. The desk meeting is at nine o'clock. I can't say the location's name properly, but it's like a Burgess or some some weird fancy place. So. We have some kind of timeline, and I'm wondering how many of these episodes are going to take place Christmas Day. I know at least one more from the previews uh, for 407, but, you know, there's only 13 episodes this season, so it's 
I know there's a crunch line here for Elliot to pull this team Elliot to pull this off, but it's it's weird that they're able to, to stretch this day out so much. Like a lot has happened in just this day alone of Christmas Day, but um, good kudos for them because it it doesn't really feel that way. It feels you know like progress is still going on with the storyline. Uh, so Dom tells Darlene to get up. She's gonna take her to the bathroom and she's going to kill Darlene. And Darlene's trying to talk her way out of it, like, this is not you, Dom, but they tell you to fucking kill me, you're just gonna kill me, that's not who you are, you know, and Dom's like, you did this to me, this is your fault, and Darlene's like, yes, I know, but I can get us out of this, and Dom is not buying it, she's, you know, Darlene's literally pleading with for her life, she's like, if you could just give me Elliot, you know, and, and Darlene's not gonna do that, and Dom is still holding the gun on her, and she... She can't pull the trigger. She just can't do it. And because that's not dumb. And she freaking like a field mice, but baby and this is the the notion that popped in my head when this happened. Just like pops Darlene upside the head, like freaking buddy foo foo. And so Darlene's out and Dom's just sitting there staring at this person that she's supposed to kill in order to save her family. And she can't do it because she, you know, it's not one, it's not her. She is an FBI agent. She's a very ethical type of a person. And she's, like, just wrecked as a person, devastated the things that she is being forced to do to protect her people because of, in essence, Darlene roping her into the situation. And Dom's just sitting there staring at her and there's a clock. She has to do this before Janice arrives. But she can't. She just, she can't do it. And, um, you know, Darlene eventually wakes up from her very serious concussion. <laughs> like, she's bleeding and everything. And she's, she's trying to connect with Dom. She's trying to, you know, plead, say, you know, again, like, I can get you out of this. I'm sorry for what is happening to you, you know, Darlene was like, you know, before that, Dom was like, before she had to kill, kill Darlene, you know, and making the phone call to Janice, she was like, you, you should have just kept on driving, like, should have just kept on the road and just kept going, left New York or something. I don't think that would have stopped Dark Army, but maybe, you know, Dom wouldn't be responsible for having to murder Darlene. Um, you know, I don't know if it's authentic or not. And one of the key components of being like a kind of a con artist, is, which is what a social engineering person is, is you have to have a bit of a kernel of the truth in your lie, if you will, or the mannerisms of the thing that you're trying to do in order to achieve your goal here is that Darlene disclosed, you know, I know you think that night is when things went to shit to shit, but it did mean something to me. And I know it meant something for to you, you know, and she's like, you gotta let me live, you gotta let me go I can I can fix this for you and time is ticking it's like, Dom's looking at her phone, it's like five minutes and she tells her to get up she un, uh, uncuffs Darlene here, she had it tied up she takes her out of the bathroom and she like gives Darlene the gun and she's like I've been thinking about this for months you know, the, the past couple months, I can't do this you have to kill me you have to kill me and Darlene's like, like has the gun. She's like, no, I, I can't kill you. I, I can't kill you, Dom. That's, I can't do this. And she, Dom is pleading with her. She's like, you have to kill me because I can't do this. And this is the only way out because her family is going to die. And they had that conversation where Darlene's like, I can't give up Elliot. He's my family. You know, what would you do? And Dom's like, this is what I'm doing for my family. I'm murdering you, basically. I have to murder you in order to protect my family. And Dom just can't do it. Can't do this. And they're like kind of arguing back and forth about, you know, you gotta kill me. And Dom has the gun like right at the chest. And I was like, that gun is gonna just simply go off simply because Darlene does not have. It was not having like proper gun control here. And Dom was just like pounding the gun towards her chest here. And I, that was, I was afraid that Darlene was going to accidentally kill Dom. But that didn't happen because um, the door opens. Because it's unlocked. 
Because Darlene left the goddamn door unlocked. <laughs> That's how Dom got you into your apartment, Darlene. You, you had no proper security. You were sloppy here. Are, are no even safeguards, like no motion sensors, no alerts to let you know when someone's coming down the hallway, or, or, or camera, nothing. You just blase. Because nobody's on their A-game here, and somehow Team Elliot is riding on fumes and past victories to get to where they're going. But some of these little mini, like these little tiny mistakes I've talked about before have finally caught up to them. And this is the mistake where Darlene wasn't really paying attention to surroundings, wasn't really protecting herself to secure herself to make sure she got to the whatever I'm assuming is the all safe location to do the, or wherever the Dexas meet, meeting is going to take place to be able to do their hack. Uh, she got caught. So Dom and Darlene are caught. And Janice is coming in with two their grommy eyes and she's like well what do we have here and she looks at Dom she goes huh well I'm not gonna kill you cause we still have use for you but this is going to hurt you and then she turns to Darlene uh, Darlene only has a gun Dom took it from from her as soon as she has opened the door and um, she goes where's your phone and Darlene doesn't say anything and Janice just goes over and sees, you know, sees the phone in her hand and takes it and puts a gun to her head and she's, you know, it's not personal, you know, uh, just, you know, just have to do. And she goes, well, I wiped my phone. <laughs> and Janice looks at the phone and sees that it's wiped. So kudos for Darlene's quick thinking about wiping the phone. I'm surprised she didn't quite do that before Dom... Um, pick, took the phone out of her hand like she didn't do a quick boop boop or try to struggle to do that uh, maybe she did and, uh, or something like that but I don't think that was the case I think she wiped it right there she was standing in the hallway with Dom facing two dark army agents and Janice and that line from Janice to Dom like this is going to hurt you is uh, very terrifying and we'll talk about that in the theory end of this episode but oh, I honestly I know and we'll talk about the theory that Darlene's gonna last a couple more episodes but I don't know how she's gonna get out of this um, other than spilling the beans somehow that there's another hack and if you take me and my brother out or take me out uh, White Rose is not gonna get what she wants that's maybe the only saving grace but I don't know if that's gonna get uh, Darlene out of the situation because I don't think Darlene can social engineer Janice I just don't think that Janice is such a social psychopath here that I don't think that's going to occur uh, so that's where we're at for them is that Angel they're in Angela's apartment Janice two dark army operatives Dom and Darlene um, that's where we leave it and it's 3 30 on Christmas Day afternoon which leaves us with five and a half hours until the Dexas, the Deus group meeting. And then we get to Elliot and Olivia. So during this time where a lot of events are happening, Elliot is going to go meet with Olivia. But before he meets with Olivia, he meets with one of my favorite characters on the show, Leon the Assassin. Uh, they meet up, and I thought it was a little strange, but... Elliot is making all these kind of reckless, bold moves here, and they meet up. They're at Todd's Coffee Shop, which used to be Ron's Coffee Shop. And there's a picture in the background that I'll talk about in the theories, and I'll, I'll have a, the picture for you guys. Um, that's very interesting from this from this scene. So they meet up. Elliot sit down. They they dap each other up, and Leon's like, "How's it going?" and stuff. And Elliot's kind of straight to business, and you have it. He goes, "Yeah, just take your hand under the table." And he gives them what we now know, what soon to find out, um, Oxycontin, some drugs. And he gets up the gun, and Leon's like, hey, man, you know, want to catch up or anything? And he goes, and, you know, Elliot's like, I got to go. I got to get the stuff I got to do. He goes, okay, stranger, don't be a stranger. I mean, be strange, but don't be a stranger. You know, keep my number. I'm a freelancer now. I just, you know, I guess he's not with the Dark Army any longer. I go to the almighty dollar, so he... If you pay him, he'll do whatever he needs to get done. And Elliot says, like, okay. And they, you know, they say their goodbyes. 
Elliot goes in line for the coffee. He orders two coffees, um, uh, Christmas mocha, if you will. And he goes to Olivia's. Um, and Olivia knocks on Olivia's door, awkward Elliot, and he goes, I got these Christmas mochas. Mind you, this is next day, so it's not like, you know, they, they had sex the night before, right? So it's this next day. It's a little weird, but it's not like too many days have gone by where somebody's knocking on yours and saying, hey, girl, or something like that. It's kind of next day, but she's like, okay. He goes, I got these mochas here. I thought you might want one. You know, they say it's Christmas in a cup, and she's like, pauses for a second. And again, there's like these red flag things that normal people would not be like either A, open the door or B, letting them in the apartment, but Olivia lets him in the apartment. He gives her the, the cup of mocha, very specific in his movement, about which cup she's supposed to have. They start talking and drinking and um, talk a little bit about last night. And then Elliot says, you know, there is a reason for him to be there. And he made sure she had some of the coffee. And he, and he, go, and he starts his spiel about, you know, I know who your employer is, I know who you are, I know about your kid and the drug test. Um, and she's like, how do you know these things? He goes, I hacked you. Uh, you're working for really bad people and I need your help to, I need you to call your boss, I need your help in order to stop them. And Olivia's like, no, get the fuck out of my apartment. You need to leave. You need to go. And Elliot, she starts getting loud and Elliot starts going towards the door and he pauses and he he doesn't go through it. He pauses. And there's a reason why he pauses. Because he and Mr. Robot had a conversation earlier um, in the coffee shop where Mr. Robot is telling him, you shouldn't be doing this. You're crossing a line. And Elliot was like, That's, there's too late for that. We've crossed, basically, we've crossed lines. And they have. And I know the marketing around this particular episode was about crossing lines and going down paths that... Um, they shouldn't go and Mr. Robot once again is talking to us the friends again still very weird about you know what's happening like Ellie's about to cross this line that um, is very dark and there's no going back once we've done this um, basically all the cards are off the table and I kept thinking to myself even with the marketing and for this show about crossing lines and going too far I, they murdered a bunch of people during the cyber attacks the 7-7 seven, seven, hack the 7-7 seven, seven, uh, cyber attack okay <coughs> and there's been other stuff before that they, 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 I've said this before Elliot's not a hero he's not even really an anti-hero he is a villain he's like the best analogous I can give is like you see those like crime movies mob movies or whatever where the little drug dealer is going to take out the big drug dealer because the big boss or whatever has done some real wrong or whatever and the little drug dealer is going to take him out and thus end up becoming the new big boss but he's going to be better than the old big boss even though he's still a drug dealer and a crime lord and that's supposed to be somehow better but the, everyone's kind of like a villain here and it doesn't really matter like the the motivations here you're you're still a bad guy he's not even a like Elliot's not even really an anti-hero because an anti-hero is like a really reluctant hero that is doing a good thing with their bad tool sets but they're like kind of a bad person but they there's like certain lines that they wouldn't cross and they're going to save like the girl or the person or do the the good thing um but reluctantly elliot is not that he's doing these things for bad reasons for a bad end result i mean he collapsed the economy uh he blew up some people. He's trying to take out these one percenters for the sole purpose of taking out the one percent because they're fucking up with society and getting vengeance for his father, which I guess you can say is kind of a good motivation, but not really. I mean, there's better avenues. Like, he could have done the Angela route and maybe hack Kobe or something like that and been able to get the lawsuit going to get compensation for all the people that have died and gotten sick and expose E Corp, but he's trying to take down the entire system in this very like dark and evil manner really. Um, so he lets Olivia know that 
because he knew about her drug test if she fails it and was custody of your kid he poisoned her coffee and I know some people are saying that maybe he didn't really poison her I think he did because in order for it to work there had to have been drugs into the coffee and she knew he was telling the truth because whatever she was feeling from drinking the coffee wasn't necessarily the sugar high she's gonna know that her body you know from taking drugs previously particularly oxycontin um, her body shift if you will like she that's why she was like so paused and frozen like this evil thing he'd done to her but is he telling the truth and realizing there might be something wrong with her body with the way she was so I think he really did give her something and she's still like fuck you fuck you whatever and he's like he's explaining to her you know you work for these evil people that have done like uh, terror attacks started wars uh, I need you to call your boss I need you to do this thing so that I can take them down they're they're evil they've done all these evil things and you need to understand this and she's like no she's like no 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 he's like you know that terrorist attack that killed your mom they're responsible for it too and she's just breaking down crying she's like I'm not part of any of this I'm just like you know this one single person I'm not responsible for all these other things I don't know why you're doing this to me this is really fucked up this is really goddamn awful and he's like I need you to do this or you're really going to lose everything and you know even though Elliot told Olivia that you know the dark army or that her employers may in fact been responsible for the terrorist attack that killed her mom Olivia is still not buying his, his stuff she she's like no and she's like well I need to go to the restroom I need to go and Elliot's like okay, okay go ahead and she goes to the restroom and Elliot's just kind of like sitting there and I was thinking to himself to myself like dude she's gonna go and get a gun or something like why didn't she get up and follow her and watch her go to the restroom and sure enough um, she didn't come back with a gun but she he can hear this noise in the bathroom and it turns out um, and I didn't observe this the, the the first meeting I guess in the bathroom there were some um, razors in there like the old school razors and she had cut she had slit her wrist so that she didn't have to make these phone call and answer uh, and talk to her boss and uh, Elliot gets in there and she's bleeding out she's done like a real cut and everything and he's panicking and he pulls out a med kit he's patching her up she she kind of wakes up from this he stopped the bleeding and he needs her to do this, still do this he goes I you know She's like, you know, I may work for monsters, but you're the worst kind of monster. You think you're doing a good thing, but, you know, you're just as evil or worse because you think you're you're good. You don't think you're a monster and you are. And I think it took, you know, Elliot took, was taken aback a little bit, but at the same time, he still pushed forward about this phone call. And he holds the, f you know, the phone up for her. Uh, she makes the phone call to talk to her boss, you know, given the phone, she's able to take the phone, talks to her boss and says that, you know, so-and-so needs to transfer her funds, I need a verification, and her boss is like, I don't see it, she goes, well, I was getting these phone calls from him saying he needed to transfer his money, and Elliot's like, he has on his phone, like, listening and watching the network so he can get the password, you know, because you just check. He does check. He's not seeing the transfers. Elliot had gotten the password he needed. And I have all that in the documentation in the show notes of um, what's going on. Like, the the, the show has, like, the just like um, with the first time meeting the, the, the Cypress National Bank, uh, there's a, a link in the show notes to where you're able actually to go along and do the hack along with Elliot in the show notes and follow along and see the results there. Um, and the passwords and even security questions to answer uh, to get through. And this, I have a link of, to the original Reddit post, but a lot of this information comes from the ARG Society, which is uh, Alternative Reality Game Society. They they do the Alternative Reality Game as part of the show. 
a lot of the like the Easter eggs and stuff that's uh, visually on the show and um, on websites that are mentioned and stuff. They play the game and and I think they win prizes and stuff like T-shirts or gear from the from the um, the studio that makes Mr. Robot USA Network and stuff like that. Um, so he does that. He gets the passwords and Moody is just like she's bleeding out here. Elliot's gonna just basically leaves her. I don't know if he called an ambulance for her or whatever, but basically leaves her and she's like, get the fuck away from me, you evil person. And yeah, I think that this is necessary. Like he was able to get what he he needed, the password or whatever. But I think this is the first time that anyone's ever really, besides the Tyra Wellett conversation where do you even really care about people, that someone's called Elliot out for what he is, which is an evil person. And he is. He's an evil person. I mean, Krista kind of did it a little bit by saying, I'm not, I don't feel safe around you. But this is, and maybe that's like the third time this is being said to Elliot, like he's the villain. He's a bad guy. He's not good. He's not a good person. He's not a good person. He's an asshole. He's evil. He's doing horrible things. Has done horrible things. Is going to do more horrible things. He, there's nothing noble about what he's doing. He's just a villain. And a monster, if you will. And so he leaves the apartment. He he ends up talking to Mr. Robot again. Mr. Robot's like, we really shouldn't have done this. You think it was so smart. Ellie uh, says, we got what we needed. All we have to do is, and now we know what the full complete hack is, is go to the DS meeting, hack their phones, and steal their funds. So now that they have this person's password, they're able to get, I guess, into the, the people that need to use phones and be able to transfer all their, their funds out of the Cypress National Bank. And I thought, you know, that's a smart hack, but at the same time, I was thinking, like, what makes you think they'll have their phones on them? Uh, and that the phones that they have are the phones that are going to be connected to the to the Cypress National Bank network. I mean, is it going to be the individual, like, one percenter, an assistant, or something? Like, there's a lot up in the air with this. I mean, do they need all of their phones? Do they need some of their phones to be able to hack and steal the funds? I mean, there's a lot of question marks here with this plan about going to the dais meeting and hacking the phones. So we find that about Elliot and then from Elliot about the hack. And then Elliot gets a call from Krista, which we'll talk about Krista and VR in a moment. He gets this phone call and Krista's like, Elliot, I just been kidnapped by somebody you know, Vera Figueres. He let me go. He wants you. He's going after you. I think you should know about it. Um, at the police station, filing a report. Um, you know, I, I think we should still meet. And he goes, yeah, um, let's meet at Washington Park, you know, in a public space. And she goes, good, I can do that. And then he hangs up. And Mr. Roas like, he very didn't let her go. And Elliot is like, I know. And he goes, what are you going to do? Well, <laughs> I'm going to go get Krista. He's going to go get Krista. And, and Mr. Robot's like, you just tormented a woman to to get what you needed and now you're going to go and save another person. Go play hero. Like, who are you? Like, what are you really doing here? Um, so Elliot goes back down the subway. He had been in the subway. He kind of just got out. Goes back down the subway. I guess he's headed to Washington Park. And as he's going down the pathway in the city uh, he gets um, picked up by Vera's guys they throw him in the back of the the trunk um, and I'm wondering I don't think it's the same car that Shayla died in but um, they go and they're taking him and so now Elliot's been captured mind you this is still about 3.30 ish so we're still mid-afternoon in on Christmas Day, this this whole Vera and Elliot meetup is going to happen. Um, I'm hoping, because they showed us Leon, that he made a text or called Leon and like, hey dude, um, meet me at this place or location. Um, this has gone on. I'm going to need your support because I think that might have happened and maybe that's going to resolve the Vera situation. Leon coming in like... <laughs> guns a-blazing, but we'll see. Uh, overall, I 
I know he got the necessary tools he needed to complete the hack, and we now know what the actual hack's going to be, but it, the, the whole thing just felt a little weird to me because I understand how they were playing it where we were trying to see the, the full, like, rabbit hole plunge that Elliot's done to this darkness and stuff, but we've kind of been here, and it's like they're kind of clubbing it a little bit on the, on the head here with this. Uh, don't get me wrong, what he did to Olivia, like, basically blackmailing her and that she's going to lose her kid by drugging her and stuff and just basically threatening the hell out of her and scaring the shit out of her to do this phone call and then basically leaving her all in that that room. I'm hoping she's still alive. Uh, all banded up from the suicide attempt, um, which... Why wouldn't she just call her employer right afterwards and say, hey, someone did this to me. I, I don't know why he wouldn't think she would do that. Um, uh, I guess it just moved the plot forward. It's just, it was a little weird. Um, he was great drama, don't mind you, between the two actors and stuff, and great drama moment. But it was just, it was just a little weird for me personally. Okay, so we covered Darlene and Dom, White Rose and the assistant. Elliot and Olivia. And then my favorite part of the episode. Vera and Krista and the Christmas story of Little Bitch and the Bully. So Vera has captured Krista. They're in his, in her apartment. And Vera is talking to Krista and he's like full villain mode. I mean they even have them eating fruit. And if you're not familiar with this trope, I think the Godfather started this, or at least popularize this but there's this concept where villains are always eating fruit um in the godfather it's like orange slices um in other movies is like grapes or strawberries or something there that are apples maybe that's where they're getting it from from the whole adam and eve story or uh the queen the evil queen from snow white uh, but villains have fruit and he's in there with a the grapefruit and he's telling chris this story about a little bitch who got bullied by this bully every day and um, one Christmas morning little bitch got this you know this baseball because he loved baseball he got this baseball bat and this baseball bat was a Emerson metal baseball bat and he loved this bat and he didn't even wait to like really like take the bow off or the wrappings he went outside and he was gonna start playing with the baseball bat swinging around and he had built up about how little bitch always got bullied by this bully, had money taken, stuff, whatever little bitch had, the bully would come and take. And here he is, little bitch, um, outside playing with his just got it like seconds to go baseball crap bat on Christmas Day. And here comes this bully about to take his bat. And little bitch snap, little bitch swung his metal bat and cracked um, Bully's face in and took out all his teeth and sent Bully to the hospital. You know, blood was everywhere, as Vera says. And, you know, little bitch um, took out his Bully. And he's telling his story for, to Krista by saying, you know, everyone has a purpose in life. Everyone has a person, purpose. And the purpose of the bat wasn't to be a baseball bat. The purpose of the bat was to take out that bolt. That's what his purpose was. And he needed Krista to tell him everything about Elliot because she's his bat. And she's going to be the thing that's going to take out Elliot break Elliot basically and they're having this conversation and you know Krista is telling him a little bit things about Elliot you know about his dad and all this stuff and Vera's like no this is like basic Wikipedia shit I need the real stuff you're 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 hiding things from me I know you know what I need you need to tell me and Krista's boyfriend shows up at the apartment because they were supposed to meet Christmas Day. They're going to just be the two of them for Christmas. And he's knocking on the door and calling. And he's like, Krista, Krista. And, you know, Vera plugs her mouth open because she's all tied up and everything. And he has his two 
two goons, YMA, and I don't know what the other actor's name is. And he's calling his stuff, and they basically let him pound on the door and call Chris, and Chris did not answer, and basically ghost, Chris is going to be like ghosting him, and he's upset, and Vera's having a bit of a laugh, and he like, he's like, okay, so that's your boy there, he's really upset that you're not going to be around him, and he's like, you really need to tell me what's going on here. And Chris is trying to be, you know, she's a psychologist, she's trying to get back at Vera, he goes, I, you know, just because you were bullied as a kid, you know, doesn't mean you get to terrorize other people or use that to terrorize people. And Vera's like, he's laughing at her, and he, he, he says, I guess the name of YMA's character is Peanut. Peanut, did she just call me a little bitch? And Peanut was like, yeah, I think she, she just called you a little bitch. And he goes to his, his other compatriot, he goes, did he just call me a little bitch? And Chris is like a little bit afraid here because she's expecting him to explode. And he goes, Miss Krista, you misunderstand me um, about the little bitch story. Let me tell you what happened. And he gets up like really close to her. He goes, well, Bully was in the hospital, all busted up. And little bitch shows up. Little bitch was the only one who showed up to this bully's hospital room. And little bitch comes <laughs> to the bully's bed. And the bully's thinking, oh shit, he's going to finish me off. Little bitch is going to take me out. And little bitch comes, and he's all soft, and he's in little tears. And he grabs Krista's hand, and he says, he grabs this bully hand, and he goes, I see you. And he goes to Krista, I don't see you're gonna help me break Elliot. Because at that moment when the little bitch held that bully's hand and says, I see you, he owned that bully. He broke that bully and he was gonna build that bully back up. I wanna break Elliot and build him back up so I can t basically take over New York with Elliot's hand. And you're going to help me do that. Or I'm going to go <laughs> to Jason's place. And I'm going to take out Jason, basically. And I didn't realize this um, at the live, my live reaction. I thought she said Mr. Aruba. But she said, she tells, dear, you know, go into my office. Go into the filing cabinet. Um, bottom drawer. Um, September 2015. And look for the file, in Elliot's file, look for Mr. Robot. And Veer makes a nod to YMA, she's going to go to the office, and Veer goes, so what am I going to find in that file? And Krista goes, that's what you need to, to break Elliot. That's what you're going to have. And this story is very interesting, and we'll talk about it in the theory episodes, but it was just very well told. Uh, both of these actors are just playing off each other very well. Uh, again, Little Bitch is my favorite Christmas story ever, you know. Uh, and you get to the heart of the machinations of what Veer is trying to do. Uh, it's something he tried to tell his hooligan friend who was following Elliot the first time around and killing him what he wanted from Elliot. He didn't want to just break Elliot and force him to to do what needs to be done. That's happened before with Ray, which I think Vera may even know about, where Elliot was forced to, you know, work on the uh the drug market website. He wants Elliot to be his bitch, basically, to be his person and to be his partner, if you will, to make, to take over the city of New York, to do this drug trade stuff. And he can't do that with a person like Elliot with his skill sets, um, breaking him and forcing him, um, if Elliot is not a willing partner. He wants Elliot to be by his side, if you will. And I guess you, we know from Elliot's storyline, Vera is able to get Krista, because he didn't let Krista go, uh, to call Elliot and set up this trap. And that pretty much ends like the Vera and the Krista story for the moment for this episode. 
but I mean I really like this story but there was a couple things like I don't know what it is for personally for me for people <laughs> in New York where anybody can just drop the end bomb at will it, it, it took me out for a second on that and he uses it twice I mean, it was a very dramatic point, and it fits within the story, but it just, I don't know culturally what it is, where mostly I see personally, like, people from New York or whatever that just drop the in bomb willy-nilly and stuff like that, but other than that part of the story, um, and this is where we get into the theories, I really didn't know, even before I went on the boards, who was Little Bitch and who was the bully. Because when he first told the story, you know, the first beginning of this episode, this, where the, this episode starts, is him telling this great Christmas story, the, the Xmas story to Miss Krista. Um, at first, I thought, as he was talking about Little Bitch and what Little Bitch was going through about getting his money taken and, and his stuff getting taken and getting bullied, that he was Little Bitch. But when he, like, slammed the fruit, and slammed the table and to dramatize that little bitch took that baseball bat and knocked the teeth out and then there was blood everywhere. I was like, oh, you're the bully. And then he talks about the bit about the hospital, how the little bitch went to the hospital and held, you know, held, it, held the bully's hand and said, I see you. And I thought, well, maybe he is little bitch because he's a very smart smart dude and he basically embraced his bully in a very empathetic manner um, and ended up breaking him if you will both physically emotionally and mentally and then I thought about it for a while and I went on the boards and stuff and some people think that Veer is the bully and that Elliot is little bitch and that's how they know each other they know each other from childhood and I think that's a very weird connection. And it'll be interesting to see if that theory pays off. Because it would make sense in the, in the sense of the storytelling that Vera is the bully. And that somebody broke him and built him back up, if you will, to be the person that he is. But at the same time, I also think it would be cool if he was a little bitch. And that this is the pathway that little bitch went on to become, you know, the drug kingpin, if you will. But... I realize that a lot of Mr. Robot, everybody's kind of interconnected in some way. I, I would think if somebody was my bully <laughs> from childhood and I see them being a drug dealer to a girl I was with, I would have recognized him. But I realized that Elliot at the time, you know, his memories are all wonky or whatever. He did that to himself. And maybe he did. not But then I would think that Veer would have recognized a little bitch. But who knows? Because we know from... Elliot's storyline that he did leave the Washington Township plant area and move from to somewhere else. So it'd be interesting to see when that storyline took place. Was it th when he was in childhood at Washington Township plant before leaving, or wherever, whatever place they, he and Darlene and his mother wound up, um, he got this bullied out because I, I would think they would have recognized each other in some kind of fashion, but I'm really not sure. I'm not sure about this theory, but there's that theory that which is going around around the the boards, if you will, is that Elliot's a little bitch and Veer is the bully. But I just think it's uh it was a great story, very dramatic. It shows the the levels of, of intellect and the forward thinking that Veer has about what he needs to do in order to get Elliot on his side and the planning that he's doing, like he's not just winging, he's planning, he's a forward thinker, if you will. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Ellie can get Veer on his side, but we'll see as the episodes progress. Uh, Krista, um, you know, Veer says, I know you love Elliot. I don't know if she loves Elliot, but I found it very interesting that she didn't spill the beans right off the bat to Veer to save her life about saying, yeah, uh, multiple personalities, he has his persona called Mr. Robot. Oh, and he might have been responsible for the terrorist attacks. Uh, he works for some kind of criminal organization. X Society, you know those people. I, I, I don't know if it's an Iranian national thing or, or what it is, but yeah, he's a bad dude. I, I'm surprised she just said, like, So, I, and I understand maybe she went 
ethically not want to disclose that to this person and cause further harm to even someone who she feels is dangerous on an ethical level, but it's her life is on the line here and you know, I would like to see like what Krista's thinking is because I don't think she loves Elliot. I do think she cares for her patients and their well-being, but she also cares for herself. So <laughs> she like distanced herself from Elliot because she found him to be dangerous. So I, I, I need a little bit more on Krista. Was she hired by the Dark Army or approached by the Dark Army because Elliot was required to go to a psychiatrist and so they funneled it to Krista? I, I would like to see why she was protecting Elliot because if it personally, if it was me, even though, you know, what I was saying blah, 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 could cause Elliot some harm, uh, my life is on the line, my family's life could be on the line, and the person that potentially, you know, I had interest in is on the line. I probably would want to save them first and then, you know, hope or figure out, you know, they will let me go and gone. But even if she didn't spill the beans and was trying to delay it enough to where the cops were going to come, I that's what she's hoping if like I tell or say whatever it is they're just going to kill me I like I said I don't, I don't know that part aspect of Chris's motivations there I'm glad she's back on the show and I've said it before like nobody's coming out of this alive but I'm really crossing my fingers hoping Crystal comes out um ah so that was the one theory about the little bitch and the bully was that Veer is a bully and Ellie is a little bitch um, the other thing here, and if you look at this photograph here, um, from the coffee scene with Leon and Elliot talking, you can see in the picture in the background, and they do this a lot on the show where there's like, these themes in the background that just seem odd. Um, in this case, you see, you look at the picture of this painting, and it looks like Mr. You know Edward Alderson and the young Elliot are on the bench, and then it looks like. Elliot's mother and Darlene are, are like at the pool area. So it looks like his family and it's very weird that that's the portrait that's up there. And it feeds into the, the overall theory that this entire narrative that we've been watching, the very unreliable narrative, uh, is being told to us from the future and these are all just basically flashbacks. And so we're getting like pieces of the, the conscious of the person, if you will, um, inputting information um, from their life um, around the reality um, is basically the theory. And then, then there's the other ones about spilling of multiverses and stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's like glitches that have been going on in this season where there, things have glitched out. The whole Tyra Wellick thing, uh, the, the save point that he went to, um, just little kind of background things. Like the previous instance where I saw like, hey, that looks like QRT was when he went into the honey trap building. And I don't honestly know what to make of it. And this has been ongoing throughout the whole entire show, uh, what that means. But it just really stood out, basically because the portrait was so large. And it was like in your face, if you will, for a moment. Uh, the hack to take out the Dickus group seems very sloppy like there's a lot of dominoes that have to be in place for that hack to go forward and I don't it seems to me like I, like the dark army would kind of know what Ellie is up to and would be able to counteract that but I don't know it seems very sloppy like you have these people would have to have their mobile phones on them one the mobile phones have to be the phones that access the Cypress National Bank um, and three, all of them would have to have them for order for this hack to work. Like, would it work if some of them got their funds stolen? Um, and it's not like it's going to be all their funds or all their wealth. It's just this pot of money, if you will. Will that be enough to destroy this group or expose them? I don't know. I guess we're going to see. Uh, but that's it for this particular episode. Again, there was like a lot going on. We're still on Christmas Day. It looks like the next episode is going to be Christmas Day. Um, <laughs> maybe they'll go to like Christmas Eve or something. Um, it's interesting how they've, they've been able to stretch this particular day out, if you will. Um, milking almost like four episodes from one day. But, uh, whew. 
So yeah, uh, this is Hiroja Shai. Uh, this is Society RC Podcast. I'm your moderator. I'm logging off this channel for now. Uh, until next time, friends.